Hey guys, this is Veronica Secret of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we are doing a bigger watercolor piece. It's been a while since I've done one of these. I've been sticking to the smaller sizes recently and you know, it's time to play around with some big stuff again. So that's what we're doing today. Now I apologize in advance if you hear like a fan or my laptop vibrations in the background. It's I think mainly because I put a lot of um, like uh, layer effects on the video to color correct and stuff like that. So it's working a little bit harder than it usually does. Anyway, I'll figure that out in some other time, I guess. But if you hear it, I'm sorry. I'll try to cancel it out as much as possible, but it's pretty loud. So yeah, let's just jump into the video then. Right, so this is an original work for once, um, not fan art, and I'm drawing one of my characters. As usual, I like drawing my own characters and settings and stuff. And the main idea I wanted to come across or portray is I just wanted this character to be sitting in the sun, maybe with a window behind him, like in a dance studio since this character does dance and is a dancer. And yeah, that's pretty much it. And this character, I often associate with the sun because of he's like a bright and uh, really uh, dazzling personality, I guess. So he's one of the characters I really like associating with sun stuff. So I guess having a, a sunlit back with a window behind him would have been a cool idea. Some other thing that I wanted to do was to like draw a mirror, which was a good idea as an idea, but um, execution-wise, there's a lot to be desired. <laughs> I didn't realize how difficult working with mirrors was until actually working with the mirror or drawing the thing in the mirror, so I will say it now, there are a lot of perspective and mirroring screw-ups in this drawing. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I tried fixing it a little bit, but I guess I couldn't... Like, I knew I wanted it to be not a super clear mirror, I wanted it to be slightly faded, so I knew that I could get away with a couple of things. Uh, unfortunately, it still isn't super accurate, so... Yeah. <laughs> I acknowledge that there are problems with the mirror and the perspective. Let's leave it at that. I'll fix it or I'll do better next time. So I'm using the Sakura Koi 30 pan watercolor travel set. As usual, I switched that to be my main watercolor palette a long time ago. And I'll also be using the Sakura no, the, the Prima Confections watercolor in the complexion set as for my skin tones mostly. And yeah, nothing particularly new or crazy, I guess. I just really enjoyed doing this drawing and it's just been a while. I've been doing dig digital art quite a bit lately and fan art as well, so I wanted to spruce things up and change things around a little bit and do watercolor and original work. One thing I've always struggled with when working with bigger canvases is when I draw the thumbnail in my sketchbook, I can seem to fill up the entire thumbnail, but when I actually get to working on the actual canvas or the actual paper, I tend to draw things small, like too small or too big for the paper, and I guess I have a hard time doing, like dealing with sizing and transferring sizes between the thumbnail and the actual drawing. So I often end up with big spaces that I don't really know what to do with. So I knew that I wanted him to be in the center of the drawing, and like with a little bit of his background visible and I wanted some window here, I didn't expect to have a lot of like floor space on the bottom. And since it's a 
like a dance studio, so it's gonna be left empty. I really didn't know what to do with it except leave it as floor. Like I, I could have put maybe some stuff around him, but I just wanted it to be like a really clean looking drawing and nothing particularly messy or nothing super detailed. I wanted it to be the lines of the window and the mirror and the character. So yeah, <laughs> I ran into, I ran into that problem a little bit. So if the video's a little bit unfocused or un un under detailed, I'm still, 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 still trying to practice how to use my new webcam. Because I, I zoomed this from really far. It's really high above the desk because I wanted it to capture the entire workspace. But it seems that it sacrifices quite a bit of detail for that. So I feel like I need to bring the camera down more to capture a, a smaller workspace but more detail. And so that I could focus it in a bit more. Uh, right now, I just zoomed it in because that's the part that I'm working on. And I realized that I don't really move my canvas around a lot to warrant having that really big field of view. So if it's a little blurry or not as detailed as the other videos or my older videos, I'll try to get to that point again. I'm just really trying to figure out how to use this camera and have good fame rates and all of that. I'm actually almost half tempted to buy an XSplit subscription just to up the fame rate of, or the resolution of the the video capture. I just can't justify it since number one, I'm not really a streamer. Number two, like the channels, like my channel doesn't really justify having like 1,000-ish or 1,500-ish pesos every three months added cost. So, I don't know. I, maybe I should if I want better quality. And honestly, I did that. I, the webcam was a step towards that. And getting a, a kind of cheap mic. Maybe I need to buy that subscription. I don't know. Because despite my love for fancy and new art supplies, I still also believe that having minimal tools is the way to go. Or having not super expensive tools is a good way to start, especially since I don't have much followers, I don't get millions or thousands of views per video, it doesn't seem worth it, and I feel like I should improve my content or maybe my engagement in the content over getting fancy equipment. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll figure it out. I'll get there. So, let me know in the comments below how have you been doing? Uh, as much as I don't want to keep on repeating the current pandemic situation, I still want to know if you're, you guys are doing okay, um, how has life been over where you're at, over here right now, they extended the quarantine again, so just more time at home for me. Um, I've had this weird feeling recently, or actually more than a couple of weeks now, that I know that I have all the time in the world right now to do things, and I am doing the things that I feel like I kind of neglected or missed doing while I was working and I spent most of my day on, on the road because of traffic situations but like I, I'm playing games like I'm playing Monster Hunter I'm playing Fate Grand Order which I already, already did before the quarantine but I'm getting to play them more 
I'm getting to draw and sketch more in a day. I'm getting to exercise. I really feel like I'm doing things I've been wanting to do. But I've also had this nagging feeling where like I've not done everything I've wanted to do yet. So I still want to draw more digital art. I still want to draw with colored pencils or my Copics or something like that. I still want to clean the room or um, clean up this, launder that. And yet, it's been like two or three months in the quarantine already and I haven't done them yet. Now, I know that I shouldn't really pressure myself to doing it. But I want to do them, so... Uh, bad time management, maybe? Maybe I am oversimplifying the tasks to the point that I feel like I could do them all within a, within the day or within a time span when in reality playing this and playing that and drawing all take up several hours in general and maybe I'm just expecting too much maybe probably I mean that's probably it and I probably just need to wake up earlier in the day and stay awake for more hours to be honest to like sleep earlier um you know wake up a little bit earlier uh -huh. So one thing that I did for this drawing or this painting was that I plotted out first, more or less, where the light would be coming from. So I knew that I wanted a harsh, slightly harsh, kind of fused, a bright yellow light, I guess, um, toward his back. So early on in painting down my layers and my shadows and stuff, I already put the yellow in there so that when I draw in the shadows and some other stuff, it's already baked into the layering that it wouldn't be like just slapped on top so right now um i've it's already done but what i've been doing was that i did the base color and then i put the yellow on top let that dry and i put in the shadow color so like the deeper reds and the deeper gaze and then i'm adding like maybe more color here and there on top of that, so the yellow still shines through underneath, but it's not the base color, and it's not the final color either. And that makes it look more integrated into everything, because it melts in a bit more with everything, and it's not just splatted on top. Um, I could seriously do better, I guess, with the lighting and stuff, but I really didn't want to do like harsh rays of light. I wanted it to be like a diffused illuminating a good part of the room kind of kind of light um, maybe the window is opaque and not completely clear or something like that yeah and I made the tiny mistake there uh, I kind of erased it with Photoshop since it's not meant to be there but uh, I, I don't know what happened there actually. I think I hit the wet paint that was on the bars over there and it accidentally streaked on the mirror area which is just supposed to be yellow. And even when I watch the footage, I'm not really sure what happened but I think that's what happened. And I tried to erase it with water and trying to lift it but since there's a slight gouge in it and it dried a little bit so it's there. I deleted it with Photoshop in the final drawing, but it's there. <laughs>
Lutz's um, notebook here. I put that I put that there to try and uncurl the edges of the paper because I put too much water, so it curled in a bit. So I put that there so that I can continue painting and let it dry and flatten while I do that. So there's paper and then a light weight from the notebook. And towards the end of the video, you don't really see it, but I do put paper on top of the entire painting and then a couple of notebooks to flatten the paper somehow. So it's not a perfect technique. Like ideally, you tape the paper down so it wouldn't uh, buckle. And ideally, you put heavier books on top of it, but I really couldn't bother to get my heavy dictionaries out to put on top of the sketch pad. So I settled with some small notebooks and some paper to absorb the paint and, you know, as a buyer, not to put any dust on the on the painting. And yeah, I ideally you wait for that to dry, but I was impatient and I wanted it done, so yeah. Anyway, we're in the preview. I hope you're staying safe and, you know, healthy and staying inside. Um, like the video or subscribe to the channel if you did enjoy the video. Feel free to follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or even art as well. And I'll see you around. Mm -hmm.